Hello, my name is Matt Siddell with Trimec, and today we're going to be looking at setting up a linear dynamic analysis in SolidWorks simulation. So first step, obviously, is going to be actually to generate that study. Um, we're going to be doing a little bit of an impulse on a gelatin mold for a little bit of levity in this setup and I already have it set to a linear dynamic with a modal time history. Moving into the next step, we're gonna to want to evaluate the, uh, the components that are being included in our study. In this case, this is a multi-body part. So we're gonna go ahead and exclude this surface from our analysis as we don't need it and set our material for our gelatin mold. Moving into our fixturing is obviously a pretty straightforward uh, setup. But uh, if you have any additional things like connections or whatever else you might need to apply interactions for your uh, assemblies or multi-body parts, this would be a good time to do that. Then you can start to get into your forces. In this case, I have a subface set up and we'll be using a plane as well that's oriented around that surface. And we'll be setting our loads across that face and also normal to it. If you notice when I mouse over that the arrows aren't necessarily, if you need to be mindful of the direction of your arrows as well, you can just reverse direction real quick. And we're also going to update our time curve because we want to see a impulse with some settling afterwards so we're gonna just uh, enter in a few extra values if you had something more complex than this you could also do an import out of a spreadsheet for that complete we can now go into our mesh Because this is a first pass, we can kind of turn this down a little bit, do a blended curvature based mesh, and we can accept that. Okay, and with the mesh complete, we can take a look at running a frequency analysis. Before we do that, we can come into our properties. We have a uh, a request for 15 frequencies initially and our time incrementation is already set up and we can just accept that for what it is and run our frequency analysis and make adjustments afterwards with what information we gather. Okay with that complete we're going to take a look at our resonant frequencies. We've got quite a few here. And something to be aware of when you're looking at these resonant frequencies is you're, once you actually run your study, you're going to want to use one tenth of this for your uh, increment in your properties, which we'll uh, take a look at in a moment when we make some changes here. Additionally, we'll want to check our mass participation factor. So all of these are well, well above the 0 0.8 recommended minimum. So we can probably reduce our number of frequencies that we're working with. Uh, in this case, I happen to already know that it's going to be one. 
So with that in mind, uh, we can come into our resonant frequencies, look at our first frequencies, actually the first two, they both have the uh, same period. We're going to use that when we uh, rerun this frequency analysis. Your time increment is going to want to be one tenth of that frequency period. In our case, we're going to be reducing this down to the first frequency, and our time increment would be this 0 0.0176. And we could rerun this frequency analysis, but that would be how you would make sure that your simulation is set up correctly for when you run your final analysis. All right, now if the study is complete, we can see our stress plot that was generated. And in our case, we want to look at the displacement from the uh, impulse. So we can load this up. Come in here and maybe edit some things in our plot. Uh, for one, I don't think we need scientific notation for our plot, so we can uh, just switch that over to general. We can accept that. And we could do something like come in and animate our displacement to see how our uh, gelatin mold behaves because of that impulse we applied. Wait for uh, SolidWorks to generate the frames. Okay, with the uh, frame generation complete, we can see. Uh, the loading, and then the settling period after our uh, applied load is released. If you were to want to make adjustments to the length of the uh, simulation process because you might be missing some information on the tail end, or maybe if you want to have the entire uh, settling of your system included into the animation or just included in your data more importantly uh, again that would be to come into your properties and your dynamic options and you'd want to drag out your end time but maintain that time incrementation um, this would be something to do after you've kind of validated that the information you're getting from your first pass on your simulation is behaving as you'd expect it from uh, how it's moving and also behaving how you'd expect for displacements or stress. Uh, if you're getting irregular values, you may want to make some adjustments to your mesh or your time incrementation, rerun your frequency analysis and kind of uh, adjust some things until you start to get more expected results. And then once you have that complete, then you can start to just increase the resolution of your different components like your mesh and your time incrementation to give you better uh, resolution on the data you're receiving. And also probably as a more important factor would be to get some convergence with uh, a longer solve time so you can validate the information that you've solved for up to this point. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful and uh, thanks for watching.